we're going to go over five things to look for in a quality tarot reader in just a moment. Hey guys, I'm Mel from Mel's Divination. I'm the owner, the operator, the creator here. We do Witchy Wednesdays, Flip Through Fridays, Astrology on the Weekends, among all other kinds of things, including tarot readings and live tarot polls. So if you're interested in any of that, I suggest that you subscribe to the channel. Also hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I do go live if you are interested, of course. And there is a new thing now called memberships and there's lots of extra perks and bonuses with that. So if that's something you're interested in, you want more interaction, you want more stuff from me, from the channel, hop over there and check all of that out. I can be found at melsdivination.com and my first link in the description box will take you to all of the things that you may need about me. My website, ways to book, different social medias, and ways to pay. So without any other details, we're going to get into this. If you don't know me, I have been a professional reader for over 15 years now. And I was even doing it on the side way before I started charging money. I have actually been a reader, a divination reader for over two decades at this point in my life. Probably more like 25 years, 30 years, 25 years about. I'm not even sure for how long at this point because it's been so long. It's something that has been my passion since I was very young. And I started doing readings with runes and then eventually moved into doing readings with oracle cards. And then I started doing tarot readings, which is now my pretty much number one love at this point. Now, with all of that said, my gifts have changed, my experience has changed. The longer I'm doing it, the more things that happen, the more I learn and grow and witness. And in this community, there are good readers, there are bad readers. And in the world of social media, unfortunately, there is a lot of fake readers out there. Or sometimes it's just they're new and they haven't really done the practice. And sometimes the only way you practice is by getting out there, right? When I first started learning, my teacher told me to do 100 readings for free before I start charging for them. That's what my teacher believed in. And I think it's a wonderful philosophy. That's not what a lot of people do. They just jump on and have some cards and they hop online and they start doing readings. And unfortunately, because of that, you kind of need to know who or how to spot a good reader, because there's a lot of readers out there that for one, sell stories, sell fairy tales, make stuff up, totally make things up and have no real abilities, but they act like they do. Somebody that's really confident can pull it off. And that confidence comes across as they know what they're doing, but they may not be accurate at all. So let's talk about my five tips for trying to find a good quality tarot reader. Before I start with this, I do want to say one more thing. If you don't know me, you may be like, why are you even telling us this, Mel? I, before, in many places in my life, used to get a lot of tarot readings. And this was before I knew much about tarot. So we're talking, I started getting readings, I want to say in 2012. 2013, easily 10 years ago now. And I went to a lot of readers, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I believed them over what I felt personally, intuitively, because I was looking for somebody to just validate what I felt and nobody did. And I spent a lot of money, probably tens of thousands of dollars that I didn't have. And 
at the end of it all, after like three years of doing this to myself and having it done to me in the sense of like I was scammed, I realized that at the end of the day, I knew more internally than what I was told by these people I was paying. And it really made me say when I became a professional reader, I'm not going to be that reader. I'm going to tell people what I see. And if I can't see it, or if I don't have complete faith in it, I'm not going to tell them or I will tell them I'm not sure. It's not right for people to take your money and karma will catch up to them. I believe in karma. I've seen it in action. Karma will catch up to these people. But in the meantime, your money and your time and your feelings are really important. And a lot of times when people get a tarot reading, it's because they're vulnerable and in search of some answers for something in the moment. So I like to try to kind of whistleblow and shine lights on things. I have several other videos about this type of topic of concerns that I've seen and things that I've experienced. And I will continue to do re uh, videos <laughs> like this to shine a light on the good aspect of tarot readers. Because unfortunately, because of people like that, they give the rest of us a bad name. And that's very frustrating. And there is no way to control that or to monitor it. You just have to do the best you can showing up as you are. Now, number one, experience and knowledge. A quality tarot reader should have a strong foundation in tarot, including knowledge of the cards, symbolism in the cards, various tarot spreads. Look for someone who has been practicing tarot for an extended period and has a deep understanding of its principles. So for instance, somebody may hold up a Knight of Cups. And they might be like, well, this guy, he's romantic. And that could be all they say. Or he's going to ask you on a date because of this. Well, what about all the other stuff? Is that all that Knight of Cups is? A lot of people will memorize one rote definition and just spit that out. And it won't make sense. In fact, a client of mine recently got a reading on YouTube from somebody and this person got a specific card and was very fixated on one and only definition of that card and it didn't fit the circumstances of the situation. Now this client of mine is quite knowledgeable of cards because I've been teaching them for quite a while now and they messaged me and they were like, what? The, like they just, she didn't hear anything I had to say about other definitions or other approaches or other points of view of this card. And I was like, yeah, unfortunately, that's, that's one way you can spot somebody that doesn't really have a deep knowledge. They just know the, the very surface definitions. They probably got those cards that have the guide words and then, and that's it. Right now, second thing, this person needs to have intuition and empathy both together. A good tarot reader should possess strong intuitive abilities to connect with the energy surrounding the client and the cards. If you don't have intuition, they're just cards. They're just cardboard. And the person can do, I have an oracle card right here. Oh, Maeve, cycles and rhythms, honor the cycles of your body, energy levels, and emotion. With no further insight. No additional where this is coming from, what spirit is saying, why this has come out, how it connects, nothing else, just straight definition. And I've, I've seen readings like that. I've had readings like that where a person will just read you the definition and it's cut and dry and there's nothing, there's no real like connection to how it fits into your situation. Now with the empathy part, they should be able to empathize with the client and create a safe and supportive environment for the reading. One of the things I love about what I do is I have been through so much in my life. And part of my gift is when I am reading for a client, my guides nine times out of 10 will show me an example of something that I personally connect to. And then I have to transmute that energy and explain to the client 
what I'm seeing and how it applies to their situation. And every time it happens, the client's like, oh my God, how did you do that? Sometimes it's hard finding the words, putting it through. And sometimes I have to tell a story about myself so that I can get it out and then we can connect the dots. But one of the things that I connect with with clients so much on is I've been there. A lot of situations, I'm not going to say every single situation because it's not true, but I've been there for a lot of things. Now, number three, ethical and professional conduct. A quality tarot reader should follow professional and ethical guidelines. Well, what is that, right? They should maintain confidentiality. Number one thing, and I actually just got into an argument with somebody about this on Facebook. They should maintain confidentiality, respect the client's boundaries, and provide unbiased and objective interpretations without imposing their personal beliefs or agendas. For example, I do a reading for somebody named, let's say, Sarah. And Sarah has a hot mess going on. I'm totally making this up. This isn't a real client. This isn't even a real situation. But let's say that Sarah has a polygamous relationship and Sarah doesn't like one of the people that she's sharing her partner with. And there's a lot of details and trauma and issues around all of that. Now, I personally have never been in any kind of situation that was involving polygamy. So that's a little outside of my knowledge area, not comfort zone, but knowledge area. So culturally speaking, I do read internationally and there are some places where things like homosexual situations are completely illegal. There are some situations where there's um, arranged marriages and those kinds of things I, I have not experienced and I don't have experience and knowledge about that really. So that's where the intuition has to come in. And that's where the lack of judgment, you can't be judging people. You don't know what their experience is. Would you want somebody to judge you? As a reader, that was one of the very big things I struggled with at the beginning, working with my mentor, because my mentor never judged. And I would hear my mom, my Italian mother, be like, well, they're messing up, uh, they're messing up a marriage, which I mean, that's not okay in a lot of cultures, right? Or uh, being forced to, uh, you know, a feminist cousin with like, oh my God, you're being forced to be married to somebody that you shouldn't. So I would hear those kinds of voices in my head. And it took me a long time to undo that, realizing, you know what? You wouldn't want somebody to, who gets a snapshot of your life to judge your decision making in your culture and things that you're doing because they're only seeing this much of it. So you need to not do that to other people too. And it took a long time for me to work on that. In fact, there's been times that I've regularly gone to readers and after seeing a reader four times or five times and something happens, oh, suddenly they're judgy. I went to a reader once and I asked questions about a partner that I had that I had suspected was addicted to um, medication, addicted to like pain pills. And I was having a hard time understanding what was going on. I can't read for myself. I can't. I've gotten better at just like allowing things to happen, but I can't. I'm not very good at it because I'm too emotionally attached. But this p- particular reader that I'm thinking of immediately was like, no, you can't, you have to walk away from them right now. They're never going to get better. An addict is an addict and you can't be there. You can't. And that wasn't my question. (laughs) So like, I get that. I actually, I have addicts in my family. I get that. But that wasn't what I was asking. I was asking about what was going on with this person and trying to understand them better. So that's where the judgy part can come in. And that's where you can get re- where I personally have found myself getting really frustrated because they, they're pushing their opinions on you. And that's not, that's not a reading. That's a weird coaching session. That's not even like therapy. It's not even therapy because therapy is open-minded. So if you find somebody that isn't open-minded, it's likely not somebody you want to deal with. And if they start talking trash about clients very specifically, 
about clients, they're probably going to talk about you to others. And you, do you want that? So there's definitely some things there about respecting things and also about not talking about things that a client doesn't want to talk about. So be careful about those things. Number four, clear communication, the ability to communicate the interpretations and insights from the cards clearly and effectively is essential for a tarot reader. Look for someone who can articulate the messages in a way that resonates with you and offers practical guidance or constructive advice. Now, if you hear somebody saying, I think, I think, I think, I think. They're not actually giving you interpretations and insights from spirit. Unless if they say, I'm trying to understand what spirit is saying here, I think it's this. But usually if somebody's saying, well, I think that they're not good for you, that's not what you asked, right? So be mindful about the wording that is used. And along with clear communication, the proper questions are really important too. If you just ask a yes or no question, you're gonna get a very, very tiny type of answer. The reader should be able to, to help guide you with how to get the kind of questions that you want answered instead of just a, a lot of people come to me about yes or no. A lot of people come to me about when, and then I talk to them about it and we find the bigger picture of actually what you're really wanting to know is this. And that's how we look at it. And then before you know it, it goes from me doing a yes or no one card question to a 10 card spread that I can talk about for an hour. So it's really important to have some kind of reader who can help guide you getting to the answers that you're looking for. And number five, trust, which also goes back to ethics, right? Trust and chemistry. Finding a tarot reader with whom you feel comfortable and connected with is crucial. It's important to trust your instincts and choose someone with whom you can establish a rapport with. A quality tarot reader will create a genuine and authentic connection, fostering an environment of openness and trust during the reading. Now, there's a couple of different things I want to talk about here. I try really hard not to comment on what other readers have done for my clients. So for instance, my client that was reading was talking about that card and the interpretation of the card and what that reader did. I wouldn't give my interpretation of what those cards mean or what that reading was about. I would do my own reading because I don't know what that reader is seeing. I don't know how they're for formulating things. I don't know what spread they're using. I don't know any of that. So I would be like, okay, we can look at this with, through my eyes. We can, we can do it our, my way. Um, I do that. And I also am very cautious about what kind of advice I give people. I do not, and this is just my personal philosophy, philosophy, I do not believe in telling somebody what they should or shouldn't do or what decision to make because it's their personal life that they have to live with those consequences, good or bad, of whatever decision they make. So if I tell somebody, if I say to somebody, you need to divorce your husband and leave your kids and move out of state. That person, if they listen to me, all the things that happen because of that is sort of on me because I told them to do this. So I don't do things like that. And if there are readers that do things like that, you should avoid people that do things like that for you. Don't put that on a reader. The other thing is with quality tarot readers, no tarot reader will tell you quality, quality, keyword, key, key, quality. No tarot reader that is legit will tell you that they need to do a spell for you to fix something. Nobody will try to burn a candle or try to do some spell work or try to weasel more money out of you in that way. Oh, I know just what you need. We need to get you this, this, and this. No. They may give you tools. They may recommend more sessions. It could be something like that, but they really shouldn't be upselling something that's separate from what you came to them for or very expensive. So be wary about 
all of that. Now, this also applies to oracle cards or runes or other divination forms. But the reason why it's more tarot based, first of all, is that's the main thing I do. But oracle cards are a bit different because it's not as concrete of a system because one oracle card could talk about the base chakra and one oracle card could talk about a goddess. So it's not the same kind of system. So it's a little bit different, but a lot of these rules fit any kind of reader, a medium, a regular intuitive, no tool psychic, somebody that uses different kinds of divination, all of those tools should, all of those tips should fit any kind of reading for the most part, give or take. And at the end of the day, listen to your own intuition. If it feels weird or off, it probably is because you're the one that's living the experience, not me, not the reader next to me, not the reader down the street. It's your experience. So we get this little picture and then we have to put it all together for you. I hope that helps you guys. Feel free to comment down below if you had had experiences that you were disappointed with, if you have had experiences that you were really happy with, that you feel like you learned a lot with them. Um, feel free to comment down below if there's some other type of topic along this area that you'd like me to further go into because I will happily do that. And check out the channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you guys all soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.